Hello and welcome to Tea with the Goddess. My name is Lila. I am uh, your hostess, the hostess, or the person who is going to be communing with the goddess. Um, we're going to do something a little different today, trying a different kind of format. So we'll see how it works. So before we begin, I would like to recommend that if you haven't already, you take a moment to cleanse your space and push pause and um, either, you know, Palo Santo, which is what I like to do. Um, uh, some people could take a candle around the room if a fire feels more cleansing of space to you. Music, um, singing bowls, or just singing as you walk around the room or air doing a sweeping motion just to get the energies praying over your space um just kind of refresh the energies restart them renew them um if you do attend um or have attended a church or a service or um, a circle um, most often there is some form of personal cleansing and or space cleansing to clear the energies so that we can enter the space or create the sacred space fresh and anew and leave uh, um, all the crap outside. So um, take a moment to do that. I am a Palo Santo spritzer. Um, I have my spray bottle of Palo Santo water that I set up because um, it's fast and it's easy. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I need to cleanse my space. So um, when you uh, have taken care of that, if that is your wish, then let us settle in. And call in the goddess the um, feminine divine, the uh, presence that will best connect us today with what we need. So settle back into the chair, take a deep breath in and blow it all out. until you can't breathe anymore and release and just feel how the body automatically expands again to let air in so we know that the body will breathe it will take care of itself in this space we are trusting our bodies to bring in what we need and to release what we don't need and inhale and follow the breath in and down the back of the throat. And exhale, letting go of all the little bits and hurts being held in the heart. And inhale, feel that breath go deeper and further expanding the body, the ribs, and exhale, creating the space around you, creating the circle that expands to the edge of the room or the spot you have chosen, and inhale, Feel that air go to the tips of the toes and the fingers and the top of the head. And exhale, feel the body relax into this space, bringing your attention to this time and this place. This is a place where we welcome, we invite, we request the presence of the Divine Feminine, of 
the energies of uh, Mother Earth, of uh, Mary, of uh, the female saints and the goddesses of the pantheons, the energy of water and earth and working things out inside sometimes hidden, often mysterious, but always continually cycling. We welcome the love that enters into this space. We know that only love will enter into this space. And we invite awareness and connection and communication. And yes, um, ideally we connect with the divine every day, every moment. But it is nice to create a space and a time that specifically focuses on that connection. Because it is in moments of practice that allow us to shore up our muscles of a belief or action so that when we get out into the real world when we are running the race or doing whatever we have that muscle memory of our heart center and the muscle memory of the brain and the muscle memory of the breathing and relaxing to bring us into connection all the time because for me ideally Happiness is feeling that love every single moment of every single day, knowing I am held and through that knowledge, being able to be open and connecting with others to spread the love. So today's tea is stash cinnamon apple chamomile. It's the first time I've tried it. So we will see um, how that goes. And yes, it is Girl Scout cookie time. I don't know if you can see them, but we have s'mores and um, adventurefuls, which is something I have not seen before or don't remember seeing. Um, Brownie-inspired uh, cookies with caramel flavor. And no, I do not have a Girl Scout, so I'm not saying come buy them from my Girl Scout. <laughs> Just saying, tis the season. Um, there might also be music that you hear in the background that is uh, coming from Pandora. And I'm saying some of these things, A, I like to share the tea that I like, um, but I don't know what copyright things are. I've paid for the Pandora, but it is the relaxation station if you like it. If you don't, it's still the relaxation station, but you might not care. So, welcome to this Tea with the Goddess. It is the new moon. Um, and it, yes, it is a new moon in a specific sign, but I can't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry, Amber. I can't remember um, which sign it is. I think we're six months off. Um, so uh, my brain isn't working that well. So it is not the new moon in Aries. It is the new moon in six signs away from Aries, if I remember it correctly. So, but it is new moon. Energy of uh, ending one part of the cycle and taking that to deep breath before we tackle the next cycle, the next choice. Ending a project um, and pausing before we start the next one. Um, Amber, the person I mentioned, Amber's Zeta Moon. Um, yeah, I don't have her information off the top of my head, but you can look her up on the internet, I believe. She um, has a degree in um, feminine mythology, I think it is. Anyway, awesome, knowledgeable woman but does a lot of work with the feminine divine 
and a lot, a lot of work with um, uh, the moon and the phases that it's in. So if you feel the desire, you might check her site, see if she has anything up these days. Um, but, you know, oh, I brought her up because one of the things she emphasized or emphasizes is that the thing that we kind of sometimes skip over, um, we talk about the full moon, we talk about the new moon, but technically the new moon is new after it is at the end. So there is that space, the dark moon, um, that space of breath, that time between the ending and the beginning. And it's not one that we often uh, recognize um, or even acknowledge personally, internally. But if we think about our cycles and the, every movement, there is a space, infinitesimal as it may be, between the beginning and the end, or the end and the beginning of a new cycle. And if you do yoga, um, your yoga breathing may also include that pause at the top of the breath, or the pause at the bottom of the breath. Just acknowledging that there is the end of that step and the beginning of the next. So even as things go in a circle, if it reaches an apex, yes, the movement still goes, but when we are talking actions and activities and acknowledging things, consciously connecting with the world around us, it is always a good idea to acknowledge that space in between the end of one and the beginning of another. Like the moment of silence between songs. Or if you've seen a really good concert or play, that, that full moment of silence at the end of a song or a speech or presentation where everybody's just like together in the words and the world. And then we come back and move on to the next scene, the next song, the next moment, the next hill to climb, the next project. So that seems to be important today. Um, remembering to take the breath, to acknowledge the end of one cycle before moving on to the next, allowing each one to be different. We are also moving into the next cycle, each next part of the spring season, um, moving out of the sun sign Aries and into the earth sign. Um, darn it, I had it on the tip of my tongue. <sighs> Hold on. Ah, Taurus, yeah bullish one that doesn't want to be remembered by me. <laughs> but the lovely thing about that cycle, at least for me, um, if you're like me, you've felt the spring energy, the transformational energy, the fire dancing from one thought to the next, um, crazy weather back and forth. Like things have just been totally up in the air energetically, physically, just, uh, yes, spring is popping out all over, but at the same time, there's still that hint of cold and winter, and is it gonna do this, and is it gonna do that, and people are, you know, freaking out a little bit about this, that, and the other thing, and nobody knows which way it's gonna go, but we move into the earth sign, which um, means it's more time to, or it's time to begin planting things. Granted, Mother's Day is still a couple weeks away, but um, it's time to start thinking about the earth and working in it and putting the roots down. And 
on Instagram earlier today, there was this lovely um, thing posted on Thich Nhat Hanh's site. I don't know if I pronounced that name correctly. Um, nope. I thought I had it, but I do not see it. Let me check one other spot. There we go. Okay. You carry Mother Earth within you. She is not outside of you. Mother Earth is not just the environment. In that insight of interbeing, it is possible to have real communication with the Earth, which is the highest form of prayer. And that is part of what the Tea with the Goddess is about. It is about that constant connection, feeling the energy every moment of every day. And technically, with the earth, that is easy because we set foot upon the earth. We move out into the outside, many of us, um, uh, to go to the store or go to work. Um, we have opportunities to get to plants and uh, put our hands into soil and in one way or another actually physically connect with the earth, that representation of the cycles of life, um, and therefore connect with the divine through that. So yay for the seasons of rooting and planting. Um, ready to uh, spring forward, <laughs> not in time. So I want to do something a little different this time. And do a meditation. Well, create a space in which we can meditate and do our communication with the goddess that way. Um, the external communication just is feeling a little forced and I would like to practice meditating. So that's what we're going to do today is take some time with meditation. It will be about five minutes um, because, you know, longer than that can feel awkward. Um, but there can also be pausing if you wish a longer time period for meditation. But before we get into that, I would like to begin the process with uh, gratitude, with um, happiness reports, with wins for the day or wins for the moment, things that have just brought me joy in the last week or so. And today was a very good day. I love where I work and um, I received many expressions of appreciation for the work that I do and the way that I do it, which really, really lightens my heart and um, brings me self-confidence actually and really feeds back into the, all I need to do is be myself. I don't need to write a book that thousands of people will read. I don't need to do a podcast that a million people will see. I don't need a cult following. I just need to be me in the work that I do every day and every moment of every day and spread that love and joy in the regular, if that makes sense. I can bring my belief and my connection of uh, the mystical and uh, that everyone deserves happiness and we all are all loved and just express it without expressing it in my work every day. Just doing my job, enjoying my job, enjoying the people that I'm with. So it's a very lovely reminder of that and I am grateful to myself that um, I believed enough in the job to get it, that I connected with it, that I manifested it, and that I'm allowing myself to grow in the job 
and to blossom and to appreciate the people around me. It seems the more gratitude I put out at work, the more I get back, which is also amazing. I am very grateful for the green in the grass. Um, it is my first time with spring here in this location, so it is exciting to see it um, and to see the trees and to see the water and the clouds floating by. I mean, I have pretty much everything out there. Um, I am grateful that my car has been running well for this week. I'm very grateful. <laughs> there were some battery issues, which, you know, if you've been in the mystical world as long as I have, it makes you question, okay, do I have not, do I not have enough energy? Is there something I'm doing that the car is trying to represent for me? But it just needed some recharge and um, it is going very well. Um, it has been a week of uh, good food, um, which can be a happiness <laughs> and can be a frustration, um, and some lovely books, um, that I've been reading. Very much enjoyed that. So I am grateful that those are things in my world. I am grateful that I have, uh, um, the lovely job and the books to read and the amazing people I've talked with this week. So, so feel free to take a moment and express gratitude for the awesome things in your life. And so, we are going to move into the meditation, which isn't going to be much of a lead meditation. I will take our breathing and awareness in, I believe. Um, and we will just sit, I'll turn the music up so that there's something to run in the background and it feels a little less awkward for me. Um, and I, I'm going to uh, do a heart connection with the goddess. Um, I have a lovely little heart center set up that I am going to sit in and just do some uh, communication that way and see how it feels today. So. Thank you for exploring this with me. Okay. So, settle into a comfortable space. A place or a position that you are comfortable relaxing fully into that if you uh, are able to uh, slide into a deep meditation will still support your body um, into a place that you can uh, breathe deeply and relax into and feel that edge of uh, the other world of uh, the divine the energy to me it's almost like a layer um, that's just right there on the skin if we can just shift which is what we do what I do when I um, go into meditation go into my heart center we shift and we are in that realm as opposed to this so and comfortable, maybe roll the head a little bit, roll the fingers and the toes, acknowledge all the parts of the body that are going to be breathing and holding space and existing 
even as our attention wanders away. And inhale and exhale, reconnecting with that feeling of expansion and relaxation. And following the awareness of the breath down into the heart center. It goes down the throat and past the shoulders and settles in the heart. And as we sit with our awareness in the heart area, we can feel the relaxation flow down with every breath. Rolling down from the top of the head, down over the face and the neck. And the relaxation just flows down over the shoulders and over the chest and over the arms. And the relaxation just flows down over the fingers, the hips, the buttocks, the thighs flowing down the body, relaxation flowing down over the knees, ankles, feet, and everything just kinds of melts. And the awareness goes from the third eye down through the throat chakra into the heart center. And the connections down through the sacral and the solar plexus, the root. Connections flowing in through the crown. We are centered in our heart, open, peaceful, and calm. And as the music rises, we connect with the divine. And we pause to be in their presence and express ourselves.
So that was our five minutes of meditation. So if you're ready, bring your awareness back to this realm by realizing first we're in the heart center and we have a connection up through the crown. have a connection down through the root chakra and we follow it back up through the solar plexus and the sacral or vice versa up through the heart chakra up through the throat chakra up to the third eye and inhale and exhale and bring life back into the body rolling that energy from the earth up over the toes the feet up over the ankles Let the energy reawaken up over the knees and the thighs Awareness back into the body, up over the buttocks and the hips and the stomach and the back. And feel things flow up and wake up over the chest, the hands, the fingers, the forearms, the arms, the shoulders. The energy flows up wakes us up over the neck, up over the head, up over the ears and forehead. And the energy flows up and up to the top of the head. And again, let's wiggle, move the head, move the body. Take some deep breaths. Move the toes, maybe touch the self or your back in awareness of this space and time, still in our sacred space. And happily, we have our tea before us to reconnect us with the physical. because our bodies are earth and they are physical. And if you're like me, it might take a few moments to return. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and have a cookie. And if you're like me, you talk with your mouth full, Connecting, meditating hasn't been easy lately. Um, it's always easy to remember to do it. And uh, sometimes it feels like the intention is there, but just the intention of meditating is muscling in a way. So it's like, I am meditating and I don't actually reach the meditation point. Um, this was nice. Um, There's still a lot going on in my brain, but um, it did get closer. My body was definitely in the zone, so that was lovely. And the reason I wanted to change it up a little it was because it felt I like I was trying to have something to talk about. Um, and that's not usually how it works at tea parties. Subjects come up naturally. There is a connection first. 
and a way we're used to communicating with our beings. And I am used to communicating with the divine much more inside, um, trying to keep my brain out of it. So I enjoyed that. Um, five minutes of space to just connect. It was lovely. Um, I hope it was lovely for you as well. I don't have any words of wisdom. Um, I don't want to have any, but I thought I would pull a card to see if there's information that would like to be shared for the week ahead. But also before I do that, I'm going to try something else new, possibly. <laughs> I am thinking about doing a meandering video next week sometime, possibly Thursday night, we'll see. Um, so that I can start talking through some of the happiness points specifically. Um, it has been really easy to let the practices go to um, just kind of run on autopilot, um, which yay me, my autopilot is a lot better than it used to be. Um, still connecting in the mornings and I am obviously you know, working on my manifesting and feeling the gratitude and um, exploring different ways to connect more and bring myself joy. But it is now time um, to uh, review the things that uh, really work for me. So, and maybe rediscover some uh, ones that I would like to work for me if I could practice them. The next moon will be the full moon, um, May 5th at 10.30 in the morning. Usually that means I would have video up the night before. Um, but I will be out of town, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. I may um, do it a couple days ahead. This moon, by the way, is going to be tonight at 9.15 my time, um, 9.15 Pacific. <laughs> um, so that's the height of the new moon here. So possibly something next week and we will see what happens week after for the full moon in May, the first full moon in May, the only full moon in May, the next full moon. And yes, I am enjoying exploring all these different options and seeing what I really want to do. Um, the fact that it's a new moon is very interesting because there have been a lot of different thoughts in my head about connecting with various communities um, and what do I want to give my energy to. And it is not just what I want to give my energy to because honestly that's a lot of stuff. Um, there's so much out there to explore and be part of and if I had worlds enough and time um, I would be doing so much. However I don't and I don't have a, a lot of energy and I don't have boundless amounts of energy. I like getting eight hours a day and I'm subsisting at least on six because I like to read. Um, and I enjoy my downtime as much as my active time, but I definitely want to 
start connecting with people again. So it has been very interesting the uh, way I've been exploring things and you know trying to communicate with people so that they could ask me the questions I need to be asking myself and the information I'm getting back and the the fact that there hasn't been a lot of communication kind of is implying that that's not the road I'm ready to take yet. Um, so that there's a different venue or something else to explore. Um, because really there are so many ways to do something, so many places to sing, so many ways to write, so many ways to be connected with nature. So many ways to spread the love. We uh, each do it a little differently. So the card today is the seer. And this is the tarot deck. And the seer is a being staring into um, tarot wood. Sorry. It's not the tarot wood deck, it's the wildwood. Yeah, it's the wildwood tarot. Sorry. Um, there's a being staring into a cauldron of water. Um, very nature looking, very green looking. Let us see. But it says, the seer represents insight, acts as an oracular mediator of the feminine, intuitive, and imaginative principle. She can mediate knowledge and help to externalize this energy into power, wisdom, or creative endeavor. She expurs us to create change in our material world. Lovely, right? So, the seer is basically who we're trying to be. Um, and can be a representative, can be a messenger, can be the person we connect with, that I connect with in the next week or so to help us bring that heart information, the knowledge of what we want to do next, how we want to express, um, how we can use our gifts in our everyday lives in doing the things that we love um, without having to reinvent the wheel or change our career path or, um, you know, start a cult following. So thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you all for blessing this space and creating this place of love and divine femininity. Um, as our awareness is separate a little as we return to the mundane world let us know that we are always always held in the hands of the goddess always held in the hands of the god always held in the heart of love and may today be an amazing day take care